Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Easy Mini Painting with me, Christopher Ridge. So we're moving on to more of the Doom board game. We're going to be knocking out all these nice, cool, pinky demons right here. They're actually pretty straightforward. I like the coloration that they have. It's just a bright pink color with some gnarly red going on there for all of their armor and carapace. Yeah, there's not going to be a lot of colors to them with these miniatures. So without any further ado, let's get to it. All right, so there are a couple of different ways to start, and I honestly think that the easiest way to do it is to start with the layer of pink. So rather than use a matte primer, or, well, I mean, we're still using a matte paint, but rather than use a, a spray primer, what we'll actually use is that Warlock Purple that came with our set. And we'll just go ahead and do a base coat over all of that. Now, if you really want to, the other thing that you can do is you could do a base coat of Dragon Red instead. We'll get to why in a little bit. But you can do that if you want to because that does come available as a primer. So if you do really, really want to do a spray primer, you could do that. But I think it's going to be easier to start with the base layer of pink and then move on to red after that. Because the red, or the, the red is all of the outer shell and the pink is all of the inner soft flesh tissue kind of thing. And I think that it's going to be easier to paint over all of the chitin and the armor with red than it will be to paint over all of the soft tissue with a pink after you do a red base coat. So yeah, we're gonna start with a layer of that Warlock purple for all of the miniatures, and then I also did a layer of matte black for all of the bases. And it doesn't really matter, you can do that before or after. Uh, you can do it before like what I did here, or you could do it after when you're done with all the miniatures. It doesn't, doesn't really matter, it's just um, something that you can do, you know, however you want to do the bases, the same way that I will address that in previous videos. Okay, so let's look at the 3D model for the pinky. And as you can see, he's got um, a pink, pink tissue, but he's got almost red armor chitin sort of thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and paint over a lot of the miniature with this dragon red color right here. We're going to go ahead and go over all of the armor scales, all of the kite and all that kind of stuff. So let's get to it. All right, it doesn't particularly matter what type of brush that you use. So I'm just going to use a random little no-name large brush right here. And let's start with all of these sort of back scales. He's got some, some big scaly kind of uh, kite and pieces on his back. So let's start with them. And you're just going to go one by one with each one. Again, you want to try to leave the under layer of the miniature that uh, that that lower layer of the soft tissue. You try to you, you want to try to leave that pink. So I think that it's going to be easier to do red over pink than it will be to do pink over red because of you know layers and contours and that kind of thing. All right, you can also go over the spikes if you want to with this red. It doesn't really matter uh, because we're going to go over all of them with a sort of bony color later on. All right, so there you go. You want to get those sort of back uh, armor plates, those back chitin right there. Let's go ahead and do the, uh, the big shoulder pads there too. All right, now there's kind of an inner layer almost of the shoulder pads. You can kind of see it in the corner. So go ahead and just try to sneak your brush into there a little bit. And just make sure to get that painted. Like so. That's the sort of thing that we're looking for right there. It doesn't seem to be the same on his right shoulder pad here, uh, but it just seems to be the case with the left one. Okay, so after we've got the shoulders on there, let's go ahead and do the arms now, because the arms are very armored. Now, keeping with the meta of this monster from the 2016 game, which I assume is going to be the same in Doom Eternal, as of the time of recording, Doom Eternal is not out yet, but it is coming out soon. It's coming out in a couple weeks here, and I'm looking forward to it very much. Something that I've noticed is that the Pinky Demon is actually one of the few demons that hasn't really changed in design at all going from 2016 Doom into Doom Eternal. It looks pretty much exactly the same. It's got the same coloration, same armor pattern, you know, just just pretty much copy-pasted from Doom 2016 to Doom Eternal, which is not a criticism. That's not, you know, a knock or anything like that. Uh, but the meta of the monster is that it's got a very armored sort of front, 
and the back of it is unarmored. And I think if you want to follow the meta, all of the armor plating is pretty much supposed to be red. Likewise, all of the soft tissue is supposed to be pink. And that's why they're called pinkies. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're sort of thinking about, okay, what part of this do I want to paint red? And what part do I want to keep pink? Think of it as the red is the armor plating and the pink is the soft tissue. All right, so now I've got the left arm there. Let's knock out the right arm. All right, so there we've got the arms. Let's go ahead and get the head now as well. I think that the head is pretty much all just chitin. The, the head is supposed to be all, all bony armor. So go ahead and get there's a little bit of uh, yeah, kind of kind of an armor pad on the on the right side there, well on on either side here, but uh, next to the bone, these little sort or next to the horns, these little triangular pieces right there, and then it looks like most of the head, you can kind of see this dividing line right here. I think that this is going to be where you can start doing pretty much everything on the head after this, you know, coming forward, you can do red from here. All right, and then you're kind of want to you're gonna want to leave the. Uh, if I can get the camera to focus, there we go. You you kind of want to leave the nose there almost pink, and it's almost like on either side is going to be the the chitin coming forward. So make sure to get the red on the front of the face there like that. All right, and that's pretty much it for the top of the head. And now let's do the underlying jaw. The sculpts on this board game really are pretty good, actually, because all of the sort of different lines, all the different spots of, you know, what do I paint where, what, you know, where does everything go, are very, very clearly defined, I think, because, like, here, the jaw is just so very clearly detached from the soft tissue there that it's it's pretty straightforward to figure out where it all goes. I, I think with the exception of, like, the possessed soldiers, which we've already painted on the channel so far, um, it's pretty easy to find out where different, you know, textures and colors and all that end and where a second one begins. It's pretty straightforward and it's all very intuitive, which I appreciate very much. And yeah, we'll go ahead and just do basically the entire bottom jaw there as, as red like that. That looks pretty good. Okay. Now let's go ahead and do the uh, the knees. It looks like the knees are their own sort of armored texture here. All right, and I think that the sort of splints coming off the shins here, I think that those are supposed to be armored, so let's do those as well. You know, a little, little something like that. There we go. Nice and red there. All right. And then pretty much the entirety of the hooves, I guess you could say, are going to be red. All right, and the big sort of toe claws, you know, one here, here, and here, you'll, you'll go ahead and just leave those because you're going to go over those with a bone color later on. All right, so now we've got the legs and the knees there. Now they've got some big old pads on their thighs, and this will pretty much be it for the red. Oh, and then we're going to do the underbelly here as well. I think that that's supposed to be armored. We'll get to that after the thighs here. All right, so there are the thighs and the legs, and let's do the underbelly here, and then that'll be it, and then we'll move on to the next one. 
Now I'm actually going to leave the uh, the tail, the tip of the tail there, because per the 3D model art, it looks like that's supposed to be more of that bone color. So we're going to leave that the way that it is, because we're going to go over that with our bone color later on. All right, and that will do it. So there is a solid pinky right there. Like I said, the back is going to be mostly completely pink, but that keeps in with the meta of the game, which is that the red is all the red is all armor, carapace sort of thing, and the back is all soft tissue because they're vulnerable from the back. All right, so yeah, just make sure that you get, like I said, the the thigh pieces right here, the knee as well as all of the uh, the feet here, the, the knees, the underbelly, the jaw. You're also gonna do the top of the head. And you're gonna wanna get the little, little two pieces on either side of the head. And then you wanna do the top sort of spinal columns there. If you want, you could probably go ahead and go over these back areas right here, just the sides. But I kinda wanna leave those pink just to really, really emphasize the uh, the vulnerability of the back of the pinkies. Okay, so we did that with one of them, so now we're just gonna do that with uh, all, all three of the others. All right, and I think that that will do it for the pinkies on all of the red that we were going to do. All right. So I'm gonna rinse off my brush right here. All right, and like I said, it's kind of up to you as far as whether or not you want to do the base coat of the Warlock Purple like I did here, and then you do all of the Red Chitin afterward, or if you want to do the base coat of Red and then paint all of the Warlock Purple you know, after that. That's kind of up to you. I, like I said, I think it's going to be, oh shoot, I forgot the jaw of this one. You know, I probably forgot the jaw of more than one or two of them. Ah, oh, just this one. Okay, let me get the jaw of this one. Uh, so yeah, it's just something to, to keep in mind and, and whatever you want to do. Like I said, if you maybe already have the Dragon Red Spray Primer, it might be a little bit easier to do that and just knock it out really quickly. You know, a single, single layer of the Dragon Red and then to do the Warlock Purple after that. But I'm not really sure. If, if you only have the actual paints, then it's probably going to be easier to do a base coat of Warlock Purple and then go over all of the armor bits with Dragon Red after that. But again, it is completely up to you. All right, and then that'll pretty much be it. So yeah, one thing that you might do is you might just give each mini a little bit of a once over just kind of look at all of them from all angles to make sure that you didn't miss any particular pieces kind of like what i did with the jaw on that one just there and i think that we're in pretty good shape so far so let's move on to the next step so let's move on to all of the bones and the spikes and the spine you know all the all that good stuff and i figured what we'll do is we'll use the barbarian flesh color for that and i think that that will provide a nice toothy bony kind of color you can use white you can use you know matte white or mummy robes or whatever that you want to do but i don't really like for my monsters especially to have white teeth and white bones they just look a little bit too clean a little bit too pristine and i kind of like for there to be a little bit of discoloration because it's it's icky and gross and it's monstrous and it's a little bit more maybe realistic, I guess you could say. So I'm going to use this Barbarian Flesh color. And we're just going to paint all of the horns and teeth and bones and all that good stuff. All right, and similarly to how we did the Caco Demons, I think that if you just go over the teeth all at once with a single layer. I think that you'll probably be fine because the shade we're going to use at the end will probably separate them enough. But if you want, you know, some extra credit, if you want to focus on some detail-oriented work, you can just paint each individual little tooth. When you do that, just take your time. You know, make sure that uh, you're, you're doing it for the sake of practice for precision. So just keep that in mind. But uh, I'm pretty comfortable with uh, my 
minute details. So I'm just going to paint over all of the, the teeth on the top row. Uh, the bottom row, the teeth are a lot more actually physically separated. So, you know, that's that's not quite the same thing. But, yeah, just kind of like this. Make sure you get at the teeth from all angles because it is easy to look in on sort of the inside of the mouth like this from a tabletop perspective. So just make sure that you get all sides of the teeth. You want them to be fully covered. All right, so we're gonna get the teeth and the horns. Let's also get these kind of spinal bits on the spine. There's some spikes coming up here and they're pretty prominent. All right, so now we've got our nice spinal column right there, those spinal spikes. All right, next up, let's go ahead and do all of his claws. And these should be pretty straightforward. It's basically just the entirety of the fingers. All right, so now we've got the claws on there. Next up, let's go ahead and knock out those little hoofs hooves, I guess. Little, little toe hoof things. Alright, so there are the toes. So those look pretty good. And then the last thing that we're going to do is, like I said, the, the growth on the back of the tail, I'm pretty sure, is supposed to be all bone. So we'll just go over that completely. Alright. Now, the next thing that we need to address is the fact that they've actually got a lot. Tell you what, let's let's go ahead and get the the ones on on the tops of his head, just because I feel like they're supposed to be sort of the same growths that are coming from the spinal column. So we got the spikes on the top of his head here. There we go. That'll be just fine. Okay. Now, like I was just about to say. There are a couple of ways that you can decide on what you want to do next. Namely, what we're looking at are all of the other various spikes and barbs throughout the rest of the miniature. I am of the opinion that the ones on the shoulders and the ones on the wrists, you can probably, and on, on the calves here, as well as a few on the thigh, I think you can just leave those unpainted, and I think that it will be just fine. I don't think it will take away from the miniature whatsoever. And I think that if you want to knock out all of the miniatures in a time-efficient manner, it's probably going to be better to just leave them like that, to just leave them red like that. And I think that that will save you a lot of time, and I think that it will not make your miniatures look any worse if you just leave them that way. So, you can go over each of these little arm spikes and each of these little shoulder spikes and you can go over, you know, the calves and the thigh spikes right there if you want to. But I will also say, if you don't want to, I think that it will be just fine. So do it if you want to, but only if you want to. Alright, I am going to go ahead and just leave them unpainted just to show you what they're like unpainted because I think that it will look pretty good. But again, if you want to take that extra time to paint all of the other spikes and all that, that is 100% up to you, and I encourage you to do whatever you want to do. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and paint the rest of the spikes on the remaining pinkies. All right, and now we've got our pinky demons all bony looking. I think that they're looking pretty good. We're actually, you know, almost done. There's there's basically just little touch-up things that we're gonna be doing from here on out. So, rinsing off my brush right now. So we're gonna go ahead and do our wash to go ahead and add some shade to all of our pinkies, and we're going to be using this quick shade here, the Strong Tone. If you don't have the, uh, the, 
you know, army painter mega paint paint set or whatever, you can get really whatever kind of shade or wash that you want. So, you know, Citadel has a really good one for Agrax Earth Shade. That one will work just fine for you here. You know, just whatever you want to use. But basically, you want to look for a, a dark shade or a dark wash that isn't quite black, but is more of like a brownish kind of thing. That's what we're going to be looking for here. All right. And it might help a little bit to just water your shade down just a little bit. So I'm just going to take my brush, just dip it into the into my water a little bit, not too much, and then just kind of mix it in with the actual shade there. All right, then we're just going to go over all of the pinkies. And this will give us the shade that we're looking for. This is just going to darken all of our low contours and just add a little bit of depth to the miniatures. All right, and that gives us a nice shade right there. So now we've got a, a nice sort of contrast between the, the shadows, you know, the low points of the miniature and the high points. And we're just gonna do that across all of the pinkies. All right, and then after that quick shade is nice and dried, the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and touch up those eyes, and we're just gonna be using some demonic yellow for that. And just make sure that you have a, a nice sharp pointed brush for this. It doesn't need to be very huge or very small, just whatever will get you a really nice uh, pointed tip there, because we're just gonna be dotting the eyes really, really quickly. There we go, nothing too fancy, just something as simple as that. My hands are kind of shaking because while I was actually letting these dry, I was outside doing some yard work and now my adrenaline is up and my hands are shaking. Um, so, I'm gonna deal with uh, some steady hands here. Just gotta take it easy. Keep your stress levels low. There we go. All right, and then after you've got your eyes on there, that is pretty much it. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a layer of varnish just for a layer of protection. And I kind of think that the pinkies actually aren't as slimy and gross and wet and nasty as the other demons. So I think that they're, I'm just going to give them a regular anti-shine matte varnish. So I'm just going to apply that, let that dry, and then you're all set. All right, well, there you go, everybody. Those are the pinkies from the Doom board game. If you liked the video, go ahead and throw it a like. If you want to see the rest of the Doom board game getting painted, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. After I'm done knocking out all of the miniatures from the Doom board game, we're going to probably move on to the Resident Evil 2 board game. And so you have that to look forward to. Next week, we're probably going to knock out the Revenants, I think. And then after that, it's all going to be the big monsters. After we knock out the Revenants, it's all going to be the Barons of Hell and the Mancubi and the Cyberdemon. So you have that to look forward to. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Easy Mini Painting. Have a good night.